Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, Lock Booktician. I'm filming from my car today. I hope this setup is good for you. It's good for me, it's convenient for me. But I wanted to make sure I came on here and gave y'all some recommendations. I feel like the lighting is being a hater as always, but it's okay. And hopefully my camera doesn't get overheated because it will be in the sun. So let me see if I can cover up the camera a bit. All right, so I am going to give y'all, I wrote them down. I'm gonna give y'all recommendations for each prompt. I was thinking about, should I do this, like a video each day? Nah, I'm just gonna give y'all a one hit, a one, two, a one, two. I'm also going to put some timestamps in the description box below. So if there's some things particular you wanna look at or you want to get recommendations for, please go ahead and check that out. So I made sure there are like three three to five recommendations. I also wanted to make sure that y'all are going out there and finding books that you would like to read. And also making this list, I realized that I don't read a lot of mystery and thriller and horror crime fiction as globally as I want. I think I read more science fiction or fantasy or romance globally more than I read my favorite genre. So I need to get my life together on that. Let's start off with the first prompt, or not the first prompt. It's not the first prompt but it's the first prompt I'm going to talk about in this video. Let's talk about the 20th century prompt for Black Queen of Thon. First we have a, I also want to say that most of the books that I'm going to talk about today are books that I have read. Some of them are books that I haven't read but I've heard good things about or books that I've just been curious about and I'll make sure that I specify that throughout this video. So the first book we're going to talk about for the 20th century prompt is If He Hollered Let Him Go. This book was written by Chester Himes in 1945 and this is a story about a young man who is talking about his struggles with dealing with everyday racism. He was then accused of something and he's just really struggling with what it means to be black and he's viewing it more as a plague versus this movement of black joy and black love that we are in right now. The next book we're going to talk about is The Between by Tanana Reef Do. This was published in 1995. This book is about a man who is losing fragments of time and unsure what is real and what is not real and it is affecting his family, his job, almost every facet of his life. So you walk through him trying to understand these time jumps and trying to understand what is happening to him and I think that it was done really well. The next book is by Eleanor Taylor Bland. This is an author I've been trying to get into her books and I haven't. I view her books as like crime noir classics in my opinion. They are just seem to be such great titles, such great info. I just really want to get into this author's books and the book we're going to talk about today is Tell No Tales and this is a story about a person named Marty and Marty just finished her second marriage honeymoon and thinking that everything is great and then soon they found out that they were two murders that happened. One was a recent murder and another murder that happened quite a while ago. So now them and another person have to figure out what happened to this person or persons and how they're connected and what is really going on. Now we're moving on to underrated books. And the first book we're gonna talk about is a book that's actually on my Black Queen of Thon TBR, a video that I hope comes after this video that you're watching. We Lie Here by Rachel Housel Hall is a book that was published in 2022. I'll be saying the publication so that you can see if that if you can mix or match or combine prompts. So this is about a story of a young woman named Yara and she goes home to help her family host their 20th or I think it's 20 plus anniversary. And while she's there, she get a text from an estranged friend of her mother who is saying, I need you to get back in touch with me. I need you to respond to me. I need you to answer my calls before it's too late. And while she is trying to, you know, plan all these things for her parents, she is pretty much being hunted, if that's the better word to describe this, by this woman named Felicia, who keeps telling her like, look, we need to have a conversation, it's life or death, etc." So I've always wanted to read this book. I put this book and this author under underrated because I don't hear a lot of people talking about this book and I don't hear a lot of people talking about 
this author unless they're black so i was like hmm, this is underrated to me the next one is like a sister it follows the story of this young woman who finds out that her sister was murdered in the bronx and she is trying to figure out what happened to her sister she's specifically retracing what happened to her sister and it's kind of like she's an amateur sleuth but she's just really trying to make sure whoever killed her sister they get their justice they get that karma if you know what i mean now hollywood homicide which is by the same author kylie garrett this follows the story of a young woman named day it's also a duology to my knowledge right now day is an amateur sleuth who is trying to figure out what is happening to this person who's famous i think it's in los angeles and it go it also gives you like some cozy vibes so i really enjoyed that book as well murder in g major is also so a cozy mystery it is about a young teacher she's black she moves to Ireland and she is going there to redeem herself something happened to her in her past which caused her to change routes and she is teaching music to these group of boys and murder just keeps happening in each book I think it's like six books and you just follow her solving these crimes and things that are happening and it could be supernatural in nature it cannot be supernatural in nature so just knowing that that is a common theme throughout the books and I think I've only read to the fourth book I believe and to also let you know Hollywood Homicide has romance in it so if you're like oh I want to read a book that has a subgenre of romance Hollywood Homicide would be that book for you moving on to the next prompt a book set in the south so I was really trying to make sure that I found books that were set in the south and I was trying to remember remember like what are the books that I've read that was set in the south so here we are one of my favorites was razor blade tears this is by S.A. Cosby it follows the story of two men who finds out that their sons have been murdered and their sons are married to each other I won't say they were pro queer or pro LGBTQAI they are still grieving the loss of their sons so they band together to find out what happened to their sons and why they were killed and and it was just so beautifully written and to see these men banding together to protect their sons protect other people and just really try to reconnect with their sons who they essentially didn't reconnect with when they were alive and that was some sad parts in it however i did think the overall structure of the book was done well i do think that for all the books that i'm talking about in this video it'll be really helpful for you to go and check out those content warnings i know for sure there is some abuse all through um razor blade tears and then there's also violence against queer people in this book as well all her secrets by wanda m morris was also set in the south and i really love this book because it talks about how do you live in corporate america and also exist as a fully actualized black woman not only that a black southern woman and like what happens to your identity when you are forced to conform or when you are not and when you are ignoring signs of white supremacy and racism all around you and that's pretty much what this book was about and I rated it I think four or five stars I want to say five because I truly enjoyed this book definitely go and get all her secrets and this was set in Georgia and razor blade tears was set in Texas there's also a sub genre of romance in all all of her secrets so bluebird bluebird was written by Attica Locke and this book was also set in Texas and I'm going to read to you the synopsis really quick when it comes to a law and order East Texas play by his own rule a fact that darren matthew a black texas ranger knows all too well deeply ambivalent about growing up black in the lone star state he was the first in his family to get as far as away from texas until duty called him home when his allegiance to his root put his job in jeopardy he travels up highway 59 to a small town of lark where two murders a black lord
warrior from Chicago and a white and a white local woman have stirred up a hornet's nest of resentment. Darren must solve the crimes and save himself in the process before Lark's long shimmering racial fault lines erupt. I like the several layers that was in this book where I read it and when I mean by layers it was like a layer of racism, some layers of sexism, it was layers of how do you move between those things, how do you stay to your job but also be true to who you are and your heritage and your culture and like where does the line even go and how do you feel about coming to a place that you didn't want to be that you didn't want to be at anyway so those were just multiple things that was coming into my mind and I love it when there are multiple things or a character is truly dynamic so dynamic that you're like lost in how dynamic they are I just don't like reading characters that is just one dimensional and sometimes I feel like some of the thrillers I've been reading lately been given that and it wouldn't be right if I didn't give you a book that's set in New Orleans so the next book we're going to talk about is The Quarter Storm it's by Veronica G. Henry this book was very interesting I will say the most I enjoyed it I feel like if you're not from New Orleans you're probably going to enjoy it more than I did of course I have critiques about everything that has to do with New Orleans or Louisiana however this book I think was done well in the sense that it's following the story and it's a duology right now to my knowledge there is another book after this called the French Quarter I think the quarter storm follows the story of Mamba Reina and she is new to the scene of hoodoo and voodoo I can't remember if it's hoodoo or voodoo and I apologize because sometimes I have a hard time distinguishing between the two only because the names are similar not in practice just because the names are similar and sometimes my dyslexia it like really gets the best of me there. Mamba Reina is trying to figure out what is happening to the other uh, practitioners in the area and she's just like I need to figure this out. She's an amateur sleuth and she's trying to clear the name of the people who practice the things that she practiced. There is a romance story underneath it and I'm actually gonna be honest I was here for that romance story even though it was given toxic but I was just here for it I was like girl put you first and don't put you first throw people under the bus do what you gotta do right but that's neither here nor there another part I really liked about this book is how you know she would say look I am a transport I am not from New Orleans these other people are from New Orleans every time I do this or do that they're looking at me like this is blasphemous you know this is not my culture but I'm learning the best that I can and just a character that's openly saying that is just so good versus when I read other books and it seems like these people are trying or these characters are you know just saying that they are the one and only and just like the expert of everything that is New Orleans I kind of feel that way with another author that I won't name so I appreciated those comments of being like hey I'm not from New Orleans but this is what people are telling me kind of thing so that made me enjoy the book even more. So the queer prompt. I have Pet and also Bitter by Kwaki Mizi. If you look on Goodreads, you're going to be like, oh, this is, you know, magical realism and it's fantasy. But there is a huge mystery throughout both of those books. And I do think that you should read them. Again, Pet came out in 2019. Bitter came out in 2022. I don't know if I said going past in the past, but Razorblade Tears came out in 2021. All of her Secrets came out in 2021 and Bluebird uh, by Attica Lot came out in 2017 and A Quarter Storm by Veronica that came out recently I can't remember why and I don't know why I didn't write it down so I'll try to make sure I get that to y'all going back to the queer prompt for a black a thon Pet and Bitter it's a story about a young girl who is trying to figure out if monsters are real and I know that is a very small synopsis but I feel like the books are blending in my mind so I want to make sure I separate them. So Pat this young girl is really going through it. She is being gaslighted. People are not telling her certain things. She is not understanding the magical system that's in her family that's in her neighborhood. There's so many levels to her not understanding what is happening and too many secrets are being kept from her. And a lot of times I felt like the secrets that was being kept for her was real rough. It was real rough and it if she would have known just a little bit more information it would have saved her life. And then in 
and Bitter. Um, it is a story about her as well, but it's like a prequel to Pet. And then there's other characters that get introduced into it. Her friends, found family, and a lot, I think a lot, if not all, of her friends are queer as well. You can also read Razorblade Tears for this prompt. A Master of Jen, I truly love this book. It's about this person who is claiming to be a master of the Jen, And then there are other characters, main characters, who are trying to confirm or deny if this person is a master of Jen. But everything keeps happening that is throwing them off the scent or there's just odd things that are happening that they have to first solve those mysteries in order to understand what is really going on when it comes to the master of the Jen, The master of Jen, sorry, not the master of the Jen. And some of those characters are queer as well. And the taking of Jake Leventon. <sighs> that book it was it was hard this is not an easy book to read i will say i would say the same for the master of a gen which also have like romance sub genres if that's what you're looking for so jake is a young man who is able to see how people pass away he is able to constantly see them reliving this loop however jake has some secrets that he is not telling people secrets that he's not willing to explore what i loved most about this is that I don't often see black men or black boys being portrayed as mediums. So having that be a consistent theme throughout the book was really good. This book also has some content warnings of racism and homophobia. So I would definitely say watch out for those things. And that book came out in 2021. Now we're going to talk about backlist books. And I know y'all like this is long but roll with me. <laughs> We're going to talk about The Wife of the Gods, which is a Darlo Donson um, investigation. And it is set in Ghana. It's about this young man who is a investigator. And he has to go back to his hometown and figure out what happened to this person who was found dead in like this forest or not forest, but in the woods. And in doing so, this town is like trying to keep secrets for him, don't want to tell him anything. He has to struggle with his job, his bosses, and the community on trying to figure out what happened to this person. He's also reconnecting with family members he haven't seen in a while. He's also trying to prove to people like, hey, even though I went away, doesn't mean that I'm not this or I'm not that. Like, don't discount me because I've been away. So I truly appreciated that. Violet Spring is another like crime detective novel I talked about it in my black classics book club picks I'll put that in the description box below so you can go learn about that book because I'm trying to get more people to learn black classics I hate to do it to you but I did it to you The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du I'm telling y'all I will always recommend Tanana Reeve Du The Good House by Tanana Reeve Du is just a masterpiece on how this young woman who is in a relationship with this man and she also has a kid but the house that she's living in or her family's house have some root magic attached to it and her grandmother is a pillar in her community so once her grandmother passes away she has to go back to this house for maintenance to go there in the summer etc this is also quite a big racist town and while she's living there she is learning things about her grandmother learning things about something in her grandmother's past that her grandmother never shared with her while she's trying to rediscover herself she's also ignoring things she's not paying attention to some things tragedy happens after tragedy there is a content warning of child neglect in this book so i do want you to be you know aware of that but this book was really written so well and I love how the house was a character and I talked about this on my 13 suspenseful thrillers I'll put that link down below as well and I just truly enjoyed this book now for recent releases you can have that number for yourself you can decide what that is for you but to me a recent release is anything between the last two to three years so for me dead dead girls by Nakesa Afia is a recent release I will put the link to um, our interview with her just so you can get more information about the book trying to keep this short and sweet another one is the violent conspiracy i'm gonna tell you that jesse from um bow ties and books or books and bow ties i always miss up i always miss up their name and i'm 
y'all i'm so sorry for doing that to y'all but i'll be like is it books is it bow ties but anyway that's not what we came here for they have a good review i think about the violent conspiracy either on their channel or on their um instagram so i'll try to link that below if i can when no one is watching i'll also link that below when i interviewed Alyssa cole with another host for black oenathon last year and i feel bad that i forget who was there with me so or if i was by myself I don't remember so I'll link that below as well and then no gods and no monsters is a book that I pre-ordered I think last year I did because it came out in 2021 and it's by Cadwell Turnbull he wrote a book called The Lesson and I freaking loved it so I was like oh I gotta love no gods no monsters so I'm hoping to read that book too soon but I don't think I put it on my black a thon list so no god no monsters is one october morning liana or lena gets the news that her brother was shot and killed by boston cops but what looks like a case of police brutality soon reveals something much stranger monsters are real and they want to know everyone and they want everyone to know about it as creatures from myth and legend come out of the shadows seeking safety through visibility their emergence sets off a chain of seemingly unrelated events members of a local rare with pack or threatened into silence a professor follows a missing friend trails of bread of crumbs to a mysterious secret society and a young boy with unique ability seeks refuge in a pro monster organization with secrets of its own meanwhile more people start disappearing suicides and hate crimes increase and protests erupt globally both for and against the monsters at the center is a mystery no one thinks to ask why now what has frightened the monsters out of the dark the world will soon find out and i think one of my main reasons of wanting to read this book is just that undertone of there are monsters in the world similar to pet and bitter so i really liked how it was connected to police brutality and sometimes i don't have the space to read these types of books but i think i have the space right now so i do want to say you know tread in that with caution tread in that with caution but i do want to read that book as well so I hope some of these recommendations were helpful for you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope that y'all have a good day. And I am out here sweating in my car. But it's okay. And I will talk to y'all later. Don't forget to look at the, what is it? It's like a document for recommendations that you would need in the description box below. I did open it up for people to write in it. But I think right now it's just shareable only because when I went looking at it this morning, I saw that some folks may have added authors that are white and not black. So I have to do them and try to get all that I can. Anyway, with all of that, have a wonderful day. We'll talk soon. Bye.